Hey guys, it is Bo Taylor here with another Roofer's Rant, where I rant about all things roof. Um, with uh, Blackhawk Construction, General Construction, um, the Roof Group, Bo Taylor and Associates, um, I wear a lot of hats. And I, ironically, I don't ever wear hats. But uh, today we're going to talk about a subject that a lot of people disagreed on online about what is the best way to close. When, when I come down uh, off of a roof, we found some damage, and now it's time to try to close this homeowner. What is the highest percentage way I can close this homeowner? What techniques do we use to, uh, to call in the claim right there, get them to, to agree to use us as their contractor? And so... I can't speak to everything, but I can tell you what I, what I do and, and see if that helps. But I find that I have a, a very high success rate with this and I've crafted this for years. And so I think it works really, really well. First and foremost, what we need to do when we're coming off of a roof is I need to control the situation. I need to be the one who is leading this discussion. And I should be that person because I'm the authority on this subject. If they have damage, they need to defer to me, generally speaking. I look at it like dancing. Me and Mrs. Williams, we're both dancing. But I'm a gentleman, so I'm leading the dance. Because she doesn't know where to step unless I let her know. And so we're dancing around here, me and Mrs. Williams, and I'm just going to dance her over to, uh, to the punch bowl. We're gonna have a, a delicious glass of punch and then shake hands and go home as friends. Now, what am I doing? I'm coming off of the roof. I'm gonna knock on that door and we try to gain some type of uh, control over the situation or get their attention. And so it's gonna be, uh, hey, do you have a few moments where we could sit down somewhere and I could kind of show you what you got going on and I'll kind of let you know what your options are here. And they'll either go inside and we'll sit down at their kitchen counter, table, whatever it is, maybe even out on the porch. And I'm always gonna lead with the first, the same thing the first time. The first thing that I say is always gonna be the same thing. And that is, <clears throat> the, okay, so this is definitely an insurance claim. So we're getting that out of the way. You know, there's no, ooh, maybe it is, maybe it's not. You could call, but they might not approve it. Yeah, I would try, you know, that stuff is no, this is definitely an insurance claim. And then we're going to tell them why it's definitely an insurance claim. So, okay, this is definitely an insurance claim. So what you have going on up there is you definitely have some damage. Now it's not the worst damage in the world. Uh, it's not that Texas style, huge golf ball or uh, grapefruit size hail. However, uh, there's definitely some damage. And so damage in the insurance world is defined as a reduction in the service life of the material. And there's some things up there, there's definitely you've lost some years, and there's some stuff up there that I, we, we really have to get your insurance company out here to look at regardless. Uh, because in your policy, there's a reasonable expectation to protect your property from further damage. And that's why you have one year to file a claim. But hail doesn't leak for two, three, four, five years. And so if this thing is gonna leak later on, um, your insurance company could come out and deny it because you didn't let them know. And more importantly, let's get them out here because I want them to look at this, because I want them to document this and the condition of your roof because I believe that they will replace your entire roof, first of all. Uh, however, regardless, you need to protect your best interest and we need to get them out here. Now the next question is, well, where do we go from here? What's next? And uh, it's real simple. We do this uh, all day long. We've done over a thousand claims. And so we're gonna reach out to your insurance company. We're gonna call them right now on speakerphone. It'll take about eight to 10 minutes. And I'm gonna tell them exactly what's wrong with the roof. You're basically letting them know, hey, look, I don't know anything about roofs. Uh, this guy says there's damage. Can you send someone out to verify that? And um, what we have uh, as far as you and I, you know, your roof, um, this could be up to a 
thirty or forty thousand dollar roof, depending on coverage. And so, if we're going to enter into a thirty or forty thousand dollar business agreement, um, I like to make sure that we that we both know exactly what our roles are, and so there's no surprises or curveballs. And so, this contract uh, or this terms of agreement. Um, is to protect me just as much as it as it is to protect you, but uh, I mean I need you to get, I need to get your signature because I'm going to send this to your insurance company to let them know that you've that you're working with us and that I can send them an inspection report, talk to them about your claim. But I'm going to give you the Cliff Notes version of it, uh, then I'll let you read it before you sign it, and then we'll call your insurance company. But it basically says four things. All contracts basically say four things. Uh, number one. You give me permission to represent you in discussing the scope of damage and any technical matters with your insurance carrier. Uh, they have, their contract is with you and they won't talk to me without your permission. Um, you're basically saying, look, I don't know anything about roofs. He's the guy who says I should get a roof or I have damage. Talk to him. Uh, number two is that we guarantee that they'll come out here and replace your entire dwelling's roof, a full roof replacement. No patchwork, no half a roof, no the dreaded sloping, which is where they replace two sides and don't replace the other two. Uh, no repairs. They'll replace the entire thing. Um, they'll agree that there's plenty of damage and they'll cut you a check for a full replacement. But if they do replace the roof and we put in that time and effort, that you'll let us nail on the shingles and you won't give the work to your cousin Eric. Um, and number three is if the claim is disallowed, your dwelling's roof is disallowed for full in any reason, you're under no obligation. So you're not agreeing to get a roof. If they say no, uh, this is an insurance proceeds agreement and they have to replace the entire thing or you're under no obligation. Um, I can't come back to you after the fact and say, well, they only, they only gave us this much, so you owe me $2,000. No, um, you, you're locked in at number four. And that is that uh, there's a new law out. It has to be on all of the contracts in Texas, at least. And that is the Roofer and Consumer Protection Act that everyone has to pay their deductible. And we can't aid you in covering a deductible or anything like that. However, uh, it locks you in guaranteed that uh, number four is that, that uh, your, your out-of-pocket cannot exceed your deductible under any circumstances uh, unless we're outside of an insurance claim. So there's some additional work you want us to perform. But uh, it's an insurance proceeds agreement. We agreed to do the work for the third party pricing software that your insurance company uses and we use called Xactimate. Uh, meaning I don't get to set the price and your insurance company doesn't get to set the price. We use a third party pricing software that'll spit out a mean average of, of uh, work in the area or cost of, of uh, materials and labor in the area. And so um, you're locked in at your $2,500 is the maximum out of pocket for you. And um, now you can go ahead and read it and blah, blah, blah. And then I'll let them read it, ask it, any questions they might have and, and try to get them to cite it right then and there. Then I'm gonna pull out my phone, beep, 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 call State Farm on speaker, let it ring when they answer, um, just let them know, hey, I'm Bo Taylor, I'm the contractor for Mrs. Williams, and uh, we wanted to get an adjuster out here to take a look at her roof. We just, uh, she's been a part of a, a wind and hail event. Always say wind and hail, don't say one or the other. They're both the same covered peril. And so you're, you're cutting off your options if you, if you say one's not there. You wanna have both as a, as a fallback plan, but we'll cover that in what to say to an adjuster. But uh, just, hey, uh, we, we have a wind and hail claim out here, and we want to see if you get an adjuster to send out someone to take a look at her property. And uh, I don't have the policy in front of me. Can you look it up for me? Or I've got it right here, and I'll give them the number. And that'll start the process with a hail date, and then they'll start talking to Mrs. Williams. And so uh, what I've done is I've come down, and I've said, hey, this is definitely an insurance claim. Whether they pay for your whole roof or not, it's an insurance claim. We need to get them out here to document the condition of your roof. Not only do we need to do that because I think they're gonna replace the whole thing, but it's actually your obligation to do that. You're obligated, if there's possible damage, to bring them out 
and let them inspect the property. Uh, and that way they document the condition of your roof and it won't backfire on you later on that you didn't call. It's not like a, uh, if, you're, if I'm a driver and I crash my car three times in one year, insurance companies can fairly say, that's, that's not normal, that's too much crashing. I'm gonna charge you more. You know, there's something about you three crashing in a year. I'm gonna charge you more. That's fair. Uh, this is an act of God or a weather-related claim. Um, it's not your fault that it hailed. It's actually why you have insurance. And the truth of the matter is that you're already paying for it. You're paying more because you live in North Texas than the guy in uh, Wisconsin, you know? Or actually, Wisconsin's kind of a hail-prone state, but uh, Utah. Um, and so that way, it's letting them know they have to call. I'm telling them right away there's damage. And then I lead in right away into, hey, here's the terms of the contract. And also, you know, I'm not begging for your business. I have to be okay and you have to be okay with these four things. But they're simple and they're here to protect you. Now, hopefully your company offers something like we offer. And then I jump right into, more importantly than anything else, Texas is a buyer beware state. It's an unlicensed state. So the guy at Arby's can own a roofing company uh, just as easily as I do. And so uh, to protect our homeowner's best interest and try to offer more than, than all other companies, uh, not only do we give you a free upgrade, but we have a 100% satisfaction guarantee, meaning we'll put our money where our mouth is and uh, we will buy the materials, we will install the roof we, with our in-house roofing crews, we're gonna clean up after ourselves, haul off all the debris. We take high powered magnets to get up all of the nails. You and I are going to walk the property, make sure everything looks really good. You're hundred percent satisfied. You're still holding on to that check. Don't give it to me until, until you're hundred percent happy. Then when everything looks good, we've delivered on every single wild promise that I'm giving you right now. Then and only then do you have to sign over that insurance check and pay your deductible. And so, um, I have to deliver on every promise or you're under no obligation. It puts you in control at all times so there's no risk of anything going wrong. And so that's why it's a simple deal. And so um, I need you to sign this because I'm gonna send this to your insurance company so they can talk to me. Uh, do you have any questions, blah, blah, blah. Then get them to sign. So I get them, I'm trying to get them to sign before I make the call. Uh, if they don't, I'll make the call. And then when I'm telling them about the company a little bit and um, how there's no risk to them um, and they have three days to cancel the contract, uh, then I'm going to go for, for the signature again and tell them, hey, I have to have this. Sometimes I'll say, I need you to hang on to this. Hang on to a copy of this because we're going to put it back together uh, in the very end there when we, when we figure out what the RCV value is or what the, the replacement cost value is. And so depending on if you're using a, a, an actual contract still or if you guys are using a tablet, um, there's different ways. But it's assume the close. You always hear that saying, assume the close. Well, someone's got to replace their roof. It's, it's in her best interest to replace the roof. Nothing bad can happen. Only good can happen. She's got some legitimate damage. And hopefully, you're a good contractor or you work for a good company. And if that is the case, then you need to assume the clothes. They should sign with you because it's in their best interest. Uh, you're going to treat their home like it is your home. If you're going to do that, if you're going to care about these people and do a good job, then there's no reason to not assume that each step they should be on board. And so um, that's what I do that works the best for me. I hope that settles the debate of what is the best way to close, although I'm pretty certain it will only inflame the debate even more. But uh, that's what I use. I hope you could take a few good tips out of that. And uh, uh, if you guys have any questions or comments or think I'm missing something there that I've left out, or uh, if anything resonated, it was a good idea, leave me a message, let me know. Uh, if there's anything you, on this uh, roofer's rant that you want me to touch on later, let me know also because we're making a little list. Uh, but I'll be putting one out every couple of days. Uh, and it's another roofer's rant where we rant about all things roof. I appreciate it, guys. Blackhawk Roofing, The Roof Group, Bo Taylor and Associates. I appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.